Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome in once again. Today we're going to be taking a look at something uh, fairly unique and a brand new product from a brand new company called Devo Knives. And what we're going to be looking at today is the Stout. Now what I've got here is the prototype. The knives are not available yet, but the pre-order is coming. And the reason why I've got this is uh, twofold. Number one, uh, I like to support good people. And one of the two partners involved in developing this knife is Lefty EDC. And if you're not already subscribed to the Lefty EDC YouTube channel, I suggest you change that post haste. Um, the other reason is I really enjoy seeing things and playing with things that are outside of my wheelhouse. Now, the obvious design intent behind this knife is for left-handed people. But it is a completely ambidextrous knife. You can open it with your right hand, with your left hand. You can slow open it. You can flick it open. All that kind of good stuff. But one of the things that surprised me the most was when I heard the price and then I saw the pictures, I'm like, well, that's not too far off. That's, that seems like a pretty good deal. It didn't, you know, really blow me away looking at the pictures and seeing the price. I'm like, eh, it looks like it's worth what they're selling. And then I got it. And the first time I picked it up, I was very pleasantly surprised with a number of things. And we're going to get into detail on those in a few minutes. But for one, it really is about the weight and the balance of this knife, the way that this has been crafted. This is a really, really, really well-made knife. For a knife that's going to be under $300, you have to temper your expectations. There are certain corners that you understand are probably going to be cut to sit below $300 in the most exotic form, which is the one that I have here with the, uh, the marble carbon fiber and the copper. I'm going to tell you this right now. I really enjoy surprises. I really enjoy good surprises. And this is one of those that changed my thinking in a lot of ways on a lot of things. One is about design. Now, for those of you that, that have known me for a while, go back with me even before knives, know that I've designed a lot of various products over the years. And obviously now being a knife maker, I design knives. And one of the things that... I really enjoy in knife designing and looking at other people's designs is finding an organic flow from tip to butt, finding an organic flow that runs through the knife. And this knife doesn't have that. This knife doesn't look like it was designed by a knife designer. There's a lot of straight lines on here. It's, uh, most of the knife is straight. And typically, that's not a good thing, at least visually. And then I started thinking back to some of the knives that I've really, really enjoyed over the years. They weren't super crazy, you know, art knives or super premium tacticals that are four or five grand, but just good solid knives. Looking at stuff from Mike Snowdy and Ramon Chavez and, and, and makers like that. And I realized a lot of the knives that I've really liked over the years did end up having a straight body. And that's fine. And then what I thought I saw as only straight lines on the blade really aren't. And when I looked at it, I noticed that the blade does taper upward toward the tip. I didn't notice that when I first opened it. I like how everything feels on this knife. This knife is designed to be used. This little finger depression here, you're thinking, I'm never going to get my thumb all the way up there. But then you realize... Not only is there a choil in the blade, but there's a choil in the bolster that allows you to choke up like that. And then if you're doing more precision cutting, you could drop your index finger in there and do your slicing as well. So the more I played with it, the more I gained much more appreciation for the overall design. If I had just pulled this straight out of the box and then come right out here and done the review, I think you would have gotten a slightly different review. But I've had a chance to play with this now. I've carried it uh, for two days. And I got to tell you, I'm really, really, really happy with how the overall performance of this knife came out. The way that it feels. 
I do have a couple little gripes, and we will get into those when we get into the tabletop review. But they're not major. And the, and the really wonderful thing is these guys know knives. They know what people like. And on these prototypes, there were a couple little niggles that I would have gone after that when I read the description uh, that was sent to me, they were like, oh yeah, well, we're already going to take care of this thing, this thing, this thing, and this thing for the final production. So they all they know very well what people want. And that's why I think the stout's going to be a pretty big success. But let's get downstairs uh, to the table. Let's get a closer look at everything. Let's look at some photography and get some nice close-up shots of this that I really can't do in here. And see what you guys think of it and see if you like it for the price that it's going to be offered for. All right, it's going to be important to get a few things out of the way here before we dive deep into the knife. Uh, first of all, I mentioned earlier that this was a uh, a knife that was being brought out by somebody who's not really a knife designer or not known to be a knife designer, and that's uh, Kevin over at Lefty EDC. And uh, by the way, all the names that I'm going to be mentioning, I'm going to put links to their social medias and everything else down in the video description. So you'll have a link over to Devo Knives, to Kevin, who is Lefty EDC, and Colin, his partner, which is CM Knife Designs. So basically, Colin and, and Kevin have gotten together, and with their knowledge of knives and knowing what they prefer and what they love and listening to other collectors and obviously Kevin uh, doing video reviews and whatnot, staying in touch with collectors, they have an idea of what they want in a knife and they have an idea of what other people want in a knife. And I think it did a really good job of putting a lot of that different stuff into this one knife design. So they basically started up this knife brand and worked on the design together. Um, I, I believe they have uh, the Devo name is all registered and all that kind of good stuff. So they're as legit as you can get. I did not mean for that to rhyme. So let's get into the packaging. Um, I'm going to assume that this is the packaging that you'll be receiving. Again, I am dealing with a prototype and um, I will try to mention as many of the differences that I was made aware of between the prototype and the production knives as possible. I've got a little cheat sheet sitting here to the side that Kevin gave me. Uh, so I might be uh, speaking in a little bit of a different uh, cadence than I normally do because I'm going to be reading off of a list, which I don't usually have a script sitting out in front of me. But I think it's very important to mention any of the differences from what you're seeing to what you're going to be getting. So when we get this open, inside rests the knife. And I'm sure you're going to get all kinds of cool stickers and, uh, and neat swag like that uh, to go along with it. So what you're looking at here, let's go ahead and get this bad boy opened up and lay it out while I speak. What you're looking at here is going to be the variation. Let's see, there's, there's a few different variations. This is the uh, satin blade. And it's going to have the carbon fiber infused with copper. Now, some other variations that will be available are black wash or stone wash blades. And there's going to be a black micarta option as well. So you can go black micarta, copper infused, carbon fiber, stone wash, black wash, or satin blades. Now, 
Really gorgeous done. And uh, by the way, I don't want to promise the satin blades. That might only be the prototype. Because uh, what Kevin told me were the choices of black wash or stone wash. So let's just keep it to that just to be safe. For those that don't know who makes the knife, it's being uh, manufactured by QSP Knives, which uh, I've shown you guys a couple of QSP Knives recently here. And uh, I got to say, for the money that's being charged on these QSP projects, I'm extremely impressed with the quality that you're getting. This is the uh, Penguin that I carry. They're doing a really, really great job uh, with their knives. You also notice uh, a week or two ago, I did the video on the EMP EDC Nimble. If you haven't checked that out, please go do so. That is also a QSP knife that blew me away with the quality that was being offered. All right, so specifications, you have a 3.3 inch blade and it's 7.65 inches overall, and it weighs only 3.8 ounces. The weight on this, it feels hefty for its uh, diminutive size, which I really, 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 really like. It changed a lot of what I thought about the knife before I received it. Having only seen it in pictures and then picking it up, it became a completely different knife, a completely different idea. I don't know why I keep doing this, but it's 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 flipping itself over. It's, it's a 180 degree difference from what I was expecting. Very, very pleasantly surprised. They're going to be offering these in CPM 20 CV, which I think is a pretty damn cool idea. It's a great steel. It's a wonderful EDC steel. It holds an edge for a good long time. It takes a variety of finishes very, very well, and uh, you shouldn't have any issues with uh, sharpening it again yourself. My God, that action. Oh, you know, I'm going to sidetrack myself for one second. Let's get off the specs for one second. I want to talk about the action because that was one of the things that honestly thoroughly surprised me about this knife. So again, uh, Kevin being lefty EDC, he wanted to make something that favor, uh, favored, favored left-handed uh, uh, owners. So you have the reversible clip on here so you could put the clip off from this side over to this side. And that's all well and good. That's wonderful. But he wanted to make it where it was easily accessible to flip open the knife from the back side. And that might also be uh, another reason why they decided to go with the bolster lock idea. So you have the same look on both sides, the beauty on both sides, and you're not applying pressure to the lock bar like you would be on a frame lock. Whether you're holding it right-handed, which a lot of us that are righties will, will tend to put a little too much pressure on the lock bar. This prevents you from doing it. I don't know that lefties have that problem at all, but you know, maybe, I don't know. Another thing that I really like about this, uh, oh, I should stop right there for one second. So while it was developed to be lefty friendly, it's not a lefty knife. It's still, everything's the exact same on the other side as far as deployment. And it's going to get a little bit easier because one of the changes that he notified me of is the fact they're going to be cutting away a little bit more on the presentation side to allow easier access to the lock bar. So what that's going to do, I don't know how far it's coming down, but if it comes down into where the scale is, that'll give you even more room for you to get your thumb in. Now, what I was going to say is one of the things I really like about this is, much like the Nimble, this gives you multiple deployment methods that are very, very easy to use. I do wish it was a flipper. I really, 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 really wish it was a flipper, but it's not. Um, but you can slow roll it, like if uh, you were holding a Sebenza. And it works wonderfully for that. The detent is just perfect. You can thumb flick it very, very easily, as you see there. Pops right out. Or you could do that middle finger flick that everybody seems to like so much. And I'm going to admit, as much as I've always found it awkward and hard to do, uh, ever since I got that uh, nimble, I, I end up doing this a lot. So uh, I get that. The action is ridiculous. I mean, it is crazy smooth. And not to the point where you're thinking, oh, it's almost too smooth. Like, let me check my pivot and make sure it's tight. It's just wonderfully smooth. Okay, so uh, back to the specs. When they go into production, they're going to be all hollow ground, which is great. That's going to make it even more slicey. 
Um, uh, Kevin says they're targeting between uh, 0.018 and 0.022 behind the edge. So that's going to be very, very thin and very good for slicing. And I'll be honest with you, I was a little worried about that if they were going to be doing the flat grind because I know they got in prototypes that were both flat ground and some that were hollow ground. And when you've got a three quarter inch height, especially on such a narrow blade, three quarter, uh, sorry, did I say three quarter inch? I apologize. A three quarter height, meaning three quarters of the total height of the blade and a flat grind, it ends up being uh, such a steep grind that yeah, you can get the edge very thin, but it's going to start bulking up as you're cutting through longer material. Think of cutting down a cardboard box. But if they're doing it as a hollow grind, it's going to get super ridiculously thin down here at the edge. And then as it comes up, it's going to help to push away the material that you're cutting. So I think it's a great idea, and I'm glad that they're doing it in the uh, hollow ground uh, bevels. I think it's a really good idea. The grinds on here are fantastic. I really love this, this kind of toucan beak going on there because of that swedge. And yes, I will always see it as a toucan beak now, and now you will too. Uh, what you really have is more of a sheep's foot design. The blade does come up just a little bit. I thought when I first saw it that it was a flat edge, but it's not. It does come up just a little bit, and then it comes down like this in that curvature, and that makes it a true sheep's foot. This is more of a modified sheep's foot because you do have that uh, depression in the blade, which again, as I mentioned in, in the intro, is going to be really, really great uh, for really getting in and doing some precision work. This oversized choil that goes down from the bolster into the blade uh, is also going to be great for letting you choke up on that blade as well. When I was first talking about the overall shape, I was worried about it. When I saw it in the pictures, I was like, it just seems kind of uninspired. Everything's just straight and everything's flat and it doesn't have a beautiful organic flow going through it. And that was all put to rest when I put it in my hand. Now I do have one gripe. If you're choked up on it, you're not going to have this issue whatsoever. If you're choked up, and that is why this this is uh, this choil is here, you're not going to notice what I'm going to talk about next. But because of the shape of this handle, if you're holding it back here instead of being choked up, you're going to feel, because it gets a little bit narrower here, you're going to feel like the knife just kind of wants to push out of your hand. I don't like that. However... If you're holding it in the way it was designed to be held, then you're going to be just fine. you got plenty of room back here in the meat of your hand. It's going to support it very, very well, and you don't have an issue. While we're on that topic, I'll get to my one and only other gripe, and I'm sure you can imagine what that is, and that's the pocket clip. Um, and I'm going to say it here, and I said it the same exact way to Kevin. Um, it, it's a crime. That pocket clip, <laughs> it's, a, it's a crime. A knife this nice honestly truly deserves a nice sculpted pocket clip, which are these are the two knives I'm going to bring out for size comparison in a moment. Or even something that's not quite as expensive, but still looks nicer than what looks like a damn paper clip. However, let's talk about this for a second. For a knife that costs, in the Micarta variation, 269 in the copper infused carbon fiber costs 279. I very quickly understood why they did this. By going into a more sculpted clip, you're probably going to add another $30, $40. And that may have put them over the price point that they really wanted to hit. They really wanted to make this an affordable knife so more people could get their hands on it. And also I, I would suspect that they want this to be used as an EDC knife, not one that you just sit and stare at and go, well, it's a little too pretty to use, or it was a little too expensive for me to use and bang up. You've got an affordable knife that I feel should be used for your EDC, that should be used for cutting, for actually doing shit. Now, the pocket clip actually works great. I've carried it now. This is my second day in a row carrying it. Pocket clip works great. It's just ugly, but it works really, 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 really well. And it's reversible. So you can very easily pop it on the other side. You know what else I found out? They're going to manufacture this in a way 
where it's going to be, um, you can use Spyderco wire clips to interchange. So if something happens and you bend this clip beyond all recognition or you break it, you can throw a Spyderco replacement clip on there uh, made by uh, made by Lynch or you can get an actual Spyderco clip. You'll be totally fine. How cool is that? I think that's a cool idea. Another change is the fact that the, uh, the corner of the frame up by the lock bar, he says, uh, was a little sharp and they're uh, eliminating that sharpness. Don't have to worry about that. He says the prototypes were 59 to 61 Rockwell hardness. That's going to change to a target of 61 to 62. So again, a little bit more uh, edge retention capabilities there. And he's and I mentioned the lock bar access. We already talked about that. And what else? They're adding a steel marking to the inside of the handle. And that's pretty much it. So any other changes, uh, he will let you know about as these knives release. So now that all that's out of the way, um, I do want to let you know April 9th, 2022. That's this upcoming Saturday, April 9th, 2022. They're opening up the pre-orders. So if you want to get this knife, I'm not coming out here and showing you something that you cannot get. You can go over to DevoKnives.com, D-I-V-O, DevoKnives.com, choose one of the four options, and order your knife, 269 or 279 Honestly, crazy low price. And he says the, the first 100 orders will receive a Devo face hank made by Issuing Stitches. I don't know who Issuing Stitches is, but I'm sure they do a fine, fine job. Now, I'm going to get my little notes out of here because I, I don't like having notes in front of me. Let's get a close-up on all the parts of the knife that are going to be relevant I got some fingerprints on here. I apologize. Now, as I mentioned, I don't know if you're going to get a chance to get this uh, satin, but it looks pretty good. I love bolster locks. I love bolstered knives, but I particularly love bolster locks because you've got the same look on both sides of the knife with your scales and you still have a prominent frame lock. This is one of the things right here that I really, truly love. Uh, I saw... QSP do that on these drop knives, on these penguins. I really love that idea. Um, as a matter of fact, I have a couple of knives in development myself because I don't, I don't like putting a whole bunch of shit on my blades and I'm having my logo done there as well on the pivot. I think it's clean, it's classy, it's a good looking pivot and it's a great way to mark your knife without putting a bunch of damn billboards all over the blade. I've said it for nearly 10 years that I've been doing reviews that I dislike strongly having billboards all over the knives. Now let's take a look at that carbon fiber. This is, I'm going to assume, uh, fat carbon. If not, it's turbo carbon. They both do very similar things. This one it has the copper infused into the carbon fiber. That gives you that reddish, that orange to reddish look, depending on the lighting. Um, I even noticed in my photography, if I just moved the light a certain way, it went from red to orange. It was kind of neat. You have a quarter length backspacer that is also titanium, just like your bolsters the entire frame. Back here again to the reverse side. Nice clean pivot design. I'm not sure what these little dimples are. These look like dimples that are used... Uh, when we test hardness on blades, but they're usually done somewhere where it's completely hidden. But be, these being a handmade prototype, I'm sure they just did it anywhere just to do their uh, their Rockwell testing. Now, let me talk about a couple of the little things that I found very interesting about this knife. I took one picture of this, and I, I, if I remember, I'll put it right up here somewhere so that you could see what I'm talking about, because I don't know how well my camera is going to focus on this. This thumb opening right here, they've got a 45 degree chamfer running all the way around that thumb hole. There's a good shot of it there. There's no sharpness that you're going to feel on your thumb. So you're not going to get that dreaded uh, strider thumb, as we like to call it. You don't have to worry about that. And also when you're flicking, you you're less likely to have a harsh edge 
peeling off little flakes off of your thumbnail or off of your fingernail. Now, it can happen, yes, but it's less likely to happen because it is a really nice bevel, nice clean bevel, and it softens up that area really, really nicely. So I haven't had any issues with that whatsoever. Again, the feel of the knife to me is extremely important in the hand. And as, as I mentioned, when I started thinking about it being too straight bodied, I, again, I went back to, to Snowdy knives and I went back to um, Emerson knives. And, and there's so many knives out there on the market. Bob Terzola, Leon Ma, so many designers and makers that keep a pretty square body on their knives. Very, very straight and this just has that little bit of curvature here going up into that choil. And I honestly didn't think that this was going to be a comfortable knife by looking at it in the pictures. Yet, I picked it up and went, huh. Now, it's still not an ergonomic dream. You know, it's not something like the, uh, the VBR here where it just melts into your hand everything's an organic shape and it just kind of, it melts into the shape of your hand. It's not like that. Uh, this is a lot more like a tactical knife and it may actually serve a better purpose for EDC cutting because you, even though these are very softened edges, it's still got a little bit of that squareness to it where it fits flatly in the hand. I promised you some size comparisons. We'll put it up against the Varga Knives VBR, which you guys know is one of my most carried and favorite knives. It is only a tiny, and I mean a tiny little bit shorter. Very, very slight difference in the size. Uh, move that out of the way. And we'll bring out QSP Penguin. I know a lot of people bought the QSP Penguin after that video that I made. And so it is uh, quite a bit longer then the QSP Penguin, and there will be a difference in the thickness, both in the blade stock and in the frame as well. And then last but not least, for those that like smaller knives, uh, the Vero Engineering Mini Synapse. And this would actually even be a little bit bigger than a regular sized Synapse. So keep that in mind if you're a fan of any of those knives, if you own any of those knives. Uh, that is your size comparison. So overall, what do I think of this? Um, I'll be honest with you. I do this a lot for a lot of makers. They'll ask me for input. They'll send me out some knives and I'll tell them if it's a knife that's not quite ready for prime time, I'm not going to make a video about it. I'll make a video and I'll send it to you privately and I'll give you my feedback on the things that I didn't like or were technically uh, incorrect on the knife or anything else that I think would prevent people from falling in love with it. And that's exactly what I told Kevin. I said, you're more than welcome to send it out. I'm, I'm looking at this going, it's going to be an inexpensive knife uh, by first time designers. I'm sure there's going to be some little niggles here and there. There's going to be little things that I'm not going to like. Uh, and it may not just be a personal thing. It might be these things are technically wrong for this design. And so here I am showing it here on YouTube. That means I, I think it's a fantastic knife. Yes, I'd love a higher end pocket clip, but it's going to raise the cost by quite a bit. And this really is, it's exciting for how low the price is. It's really well made. I love the thickness of the frame. I love the thickness of the lock. I love the thickness of the blade stock. I love how it feels when you're holding it the right way. I love the toucan bill. I love the shape. I really like this thumb opening. Um, if the blade were a little bit taller, it had a larger opening, it'd be even easier for your thumb to access it. But uh, I really haven't had any issues with getting my thumb in there or getting my middle finger in there for slow opening or for flicking it, it doesn't seem to matter. This knife just wants to open and it wants to close. Um, I do wish there was a le much less of a gap here uh, in the lock. I, I don't see why there needs to be such a huge, I have nothing to stick in there to show you, but it is a really, really large gap. That really should be closed up a little bit. But does that change the function? No, not even in the slightest. It doesn't hinder it in any way, shape, or form. 
So them's my thoughts. Uh, I, I really like how this whole thing is done. There, It is a nearly seamless integration between the titanium bolster and the scales. Uh, I love the flat pivot. I love them putting the logo in there. I like how the blade comes up a little bit out of the body of the knife so you can see the aggressive nature and design of that blade shape. There's a lot to love about this knife. If you're if you if you think that the the pocket clip is is just a a non-negotiable point for you, I would beg you to just change your mind for a moment. Try it out and see. Because once you've got it in the pocket, you're going to love how it feels. You're going to love the fact that you don't really feel, yeah, I don't hardly feel that clip at all. There's no real hot spot. You're going to love the functionality of it. And I think when you love the functionality of something enough, you'll then become to, you'll come to appreciate the overall design and the idea behind it. So for me, it's a winner. Uh, I'm going to do my best to try to get in on the pre-order. I actually want to order uh, the model like this. I think I want to do the stone wash, and I want the copper-infused carbon fiber. I think it's going to be just a sick, sick knife. I've taken this out of my pocket probably a hundred times today just to play with it, just to flick it, just to have fun with it, just to feel that crazy action, and to feel how soft all of those edges are to feel how nice it feels in the hand. They did a bang up job. I'm very, very happy with that. Quick little sneak peek for what's going to be coming up next. Uh, a lot of you guys know that I'm a big fan of Cultra Tech, and there is a new Cultra Tech knife coming out that I am pretty stoked about. It's sitting right here in my hand. So, one of the next videos that you're going to be seeing is going to be on this Cultra Tech in my hands and for the very first time I can announce it's an affordable Cultra Tech like actually truly affordable no it's not going to be two three hundred dollars but the least expensive Cultra Tech that's ever been made was eighteen hundred dollars so when I call it affordable for Cultra Tech it's affordable it's just not as affordable as this all right, guys, that's it for me right now. Thank you so much for joining me as always, and I'll catch you on the next video.